who are you? <laughs> so my name is Tracy and this is... I'm Ashley and this is Henry. And he is, uh, he's our three and a half year old son. And you know, we, we live on a farm. We live on three acres with this bus. Um, like I said earlier, we haven't transitioned into moving into this bus full time yet. Um, but we do plan on doing that. You know, if you're if you're looking into uh, into doing this, which which we really encourage, you, just just get out of debt. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. And something like this is a, is a good road to do such. Thing. After the school bus, we want to build a tiny house um, out of a car out of a carport frame. And uh, I just cringe at the fact that getting a loan for that. Um, and you know, it's been so long since we've had a loan. Yeah. And everything we have is paid for, which is really nice. We just go, okay, you know, if we've got it, let's go get it. Let's not go to the bank and get a loan because then you're stuck. Oh man, I can't make this payment this month. Or what are we going to do? You know, what are we going to sacrifice? This way you're, you know, you got what you got and you don't have to worry about where the money's going. So if we can show you how, you know, along the way of how we're building things and how, you know, just to have that mindset of not uh, getting back into debt, you know, we, we really want to help you out like that. Hey guys, so you might remember Farm Alarm from the collaboration we did a couple months ago talking about the importance of a homestead with children and a homestead in children's lives and chores and um, the balance that it gives us as a family. And so these guys are the ones that started that collaboration. Super fun, so make sure to go check out that playlist. But I kind of wanted to talk about young families kind of trying to get into this, the importance of being debt free, the importance of kind of thinking outside the box. We were in an RV and it doesn't sound like it was nearly as comfortable as the school bus has been for these guys. And so we're going to take a tour. You're going to talk a little bit about your philosophy, why you chose to do this, especially with the young family. Why did you feel comfortable to be able to take on this kind of challenge adventure? Well, our family is young. It's, it's a small family. We, we only have one child. And so I actually didn't think that was a big deal because a lot of people um, you know, they, they would think, oh, we have too many kids. Well, we have, we have the uh, least amount of kids with still having kids, one. And uh, he's young, you know, he doesn't really know the difference. And uh, he, he's, he likes big trucks, fire trucks. He likes the school bus. So uh, we thought that would uh, work out real well for him. Uh, one question is, I know a lot of people watch Justin Rhodes cross the country, and I know he had somebody else that was working on his school bus. Do you think you could put together a series for people to where you could say, this is the skill you need with this and I can showcase this and this is the, the this is how to know if this is safe. Did I do this safely? Is this would this meet the qualification of I'm gonna be traveling down the road, nobody's gonna get hurt, it's gonna hold together. I know that a lot of people they're like, I could do this if I didn't have to pay somebody else to do it. Do you think that like a workshop or something would be something you guys could put together? Absolutely. You know, you said I think I could do this without having to pay somebody to do it. That's a huge thing right there because you know you see a lot of tiny houses where people are paying eighty, ninety thousand dollars, even sixty thousand dollars for a tiny house. That doesn't get you debt free. Right. I mean, unless you're making three hundred thousand dollars a year, and most people that want to move into a tiny house are making three hundred thousand dollars right. a year. So, so I don't know if anybody's watched my channel and seen that everything that I do is DIY, but it's not always beautiful and it's not always what most people would see is functional the first time. For me, if I want to learn a new skill, I want to see somebody do it, I want a PDF to do it, and then a lot of times I want to take a class to do it. I want somebody to hold my hand and teach me how to weld. And I know that there's a lot of people out there that are doing carpentry classes and that kind of thing, but I don't really see anybody out there doing welding classes or fabricating classes. Or And, and yet the fascination is with this kind of new project because people want to be on the road, and again, they don't want to put $85,000 into something that they wouldn't be able to turn around. This you could turn around pretty easily. A tiny house, yeah. you don't flip it very easy. Right. Okay, so make sure to go check out Farm Alarm. They have an amazing homesteading channel, but hopefully they will segue a little bit for a while and explain to us all the magic that has happened with their schoolie. Absolutely. Right? So go check them out and we'll talk to you later. Why do you not have a front door? Well, I deleted the front door because, I guess mainly because I wanted to have uh, my wife ride passenger with mm. me. So, you know, our, our original plans with this, this thing has changed our, uh, what we were going to do with it um, probably two or three times. And originally we were just going to, you know, use it as a camper and do some traveling. And I've seen a lot of people put a passenger seat, but it's, it's in a school bus, you know, right here you've got a, a, a stairwell. And so they put it behind the stairwell. And I didn't really like that. I wanted, I wanted somebody to be right here beside me. And so that was the main reason why we deleted that door, moved that door back there. And then we put another seat up front. I love it. Okay, go ahead and give us the grand tour. Anything you think of along the way, just feel like 
we don't we're not aware of what we're looking for okay so this is the door we put in here um got this actually from a mobile home place and uh, it, it fit in there real good it, it wasn't too tall as you can see it goes right to the right to the top of where the window was and it came down just a little bit um, which worked okay because we had to put a stairwell in there and, and that standard door height or standard bus height right there that'd be a heck of a jump to get up in there and uh, you can see that we had to take out two windows because um, there, there's actually a, a, uh, a beam right here so we took that out and uh, it, it didn't it didn't affect anything this thing is all steel so it, it didn't take any uh, structural rigidity out of it but so we measured the door we cut that out of there then we built a stairwell on the inside uh, but real quick you can see that we also deleted some windows out of here because we didn't want the whole thing to be windows just like a, a regular school bus um, you know a, a glass house I didn't want to live in a glass house but uh, um, places that you know the bathroom back here we, we have some frosted window tint on it and that way it still lets that light in but no one can see in and uh, the places that oh, was gonna gonna be stuff in front of it we there was no reason to keep those windows okay all right so if you see here behind us um, we've got all of these cabinets that we built um, these, this cabinet facing we actually ripped off from an old mobile home and uh, that, that we had taken some cabinets out of and uh, you know they were they were junk and we weren't going to use them but I decided hey why throw them away why don't we just build the entire cabinet right here is actually made out of two by four studs and then we just slapped this entire face on here and uh, we sanded it all down and we painted it white then we painted it a really neat blue color and then we sanded it down in spots to kind of make it look old. We gel stained it and uh, wiped that gel stain off. Then we put a, a flat clear coat on it. And so, you know, they look really old farmhouse wore out. Um, up top, you can kind of see the same thing. The frame on these is actually made from steel. So I went to a fa metal fabricating shop and we broke over all this metal here and uh, brought some uprights, welded it all to the bus. So these things are super secure and then just had put some wood doors in the same process just so they all match. And we also have some of those exact same cabinets on this side. One thing that we did not want to do was have a RV cook stove. Um, there's a, you know, cause we're, we're planning on living in this thing uh, for some time now. And the day-to-day -day uses on these RV cook stoves, I was a little bit uh, worried about the valves that are on them just because I thought, well, what if they start leaking? This is my family's livelihood. We're not trying to be in here with uh, leaky propane. So we bought this, uh, this in-dash, this uh, in-dash, but in-counter um, cook, cook stove. Um, I, I don't think we gave a whole lot for it either. We got it off eBay and uh, it's self-igniting and you do not have to be hooked up to electricity to get it to work and it is all propane. On this side of the bus, you'll see another countertop. It matches the countertop on this side. Um, this is actually what we use as our dinner table. Um, it's small. Originally, we actually had a booth in here out of an RV. Uh, we had bought that booth for about $50. I thought that was a pretty good deal. Um, the only bad part about it, it stuck out about right here. So you didn't have a whole lot of uh, room to move around it. Plus, it was a, a little longer than this, about almost three windows deep. And whenever you're in a tiny place like this, the uh, the more room that you you can have the better and so that booth just took up too much space um so we decided to get rid of that um we actually sold it uh, i think we sold it for a hundred bucks so we were able to make a little bit of money off of it and uh we got this got this countertop to replace that so up here you see both driver seats um, or driver and a passenger seat they came out of a chevy silverado and uh you know we wanted a matching set of seats that are, are very comfortable and this is, as we talked about outside, this is uh, doing that door delete allowed us to have this passenger seat. Um, being in a school bus, um, you know, we, we wanted to have a safe of some sort. So we did integrate a nice safe here. That way we can store all of our personal belongings in there and not have to worry about, about it getting uh, broken into, you know, because when we're traveling to events or, or, you know, something like that, you really want to be secure. The couch we have here is actually out of an RV. Um, we got it given to us for free and it is a uh, fold-out couch So this will lift up and it lays out into another bed and we just reupholstered that we went to the fabric shop and uh, and, and just reupholstered it so the, the upholstery was really nasty on it So in, in all we probably have like $20 wrapped up into this couch up here You see some uh, this this wood box here. It's actually 
some recessed LED lighting for whenever we are hooked up to shore power. I know a lot of people might say that this is actually just a dust and bug collector, but it, it does work good because it reflects that light right off of the ceiling and you're not staring at some really bright lights. This is um, this was another challenge that we uh, we wanted a place to, to put clothes and, and originally we were going to have um, a closet where we could hang a bunch of clothes but not everything gets hung up and so we decided well let's look around for a dresser we got this really old dresser given to us um, we sanded all the drawers down and uh, once again gel stained it and then stressed it out in some places and then put a urethane coat on it we came back in and polished all of the original hardware because this thing is, is really old actually and they, the hardware that they make today was not the right sizes. And so we took a, a buffing wheel to these, uh, this original hardware and it turned out excellent. But we really like the fact that it is recessed in this wall and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. On this side you will see my, my young son's little bed. Um, there's about four foot right here so this is going to work good for him until he gets over four foot tall. But right now it's working excellent for him. He loves his little space. And right above here is, right now this is kind of a catch-all, but again, we're going to put clothes in here and, and, and just fo all folded clothes go up in this area here. In the back you see our, our mattress. This is where uh, we sleep, and it is elevated, so we have plenty of storage underneath. Uh, we've got a, a memory foam mattress that we got off of Amazon. It was a couple hundred dollars, and it... It's pretty comparable to a Tempur-Pedic, which is about a thousand dollars, and um, you know you can get a lot of money wrapped up into a bed. So whenever uh, just shopping around, you know, again being frugal. Underneath, if you can see, we have we have a storage tank under there, and it's about 65 gallons of water. So we have uh, water for um, off-grid usage, and we're also able to hook up to a uh, shore water as well. We did go with an on-demand style water heater. This is full propane, although it does take electricity to ignite it. Um, we were going to originally get a, a tank style water heater, but there just wasn't room inside the school bus, so this was a great option. And which brand do you like? Um, I know it makes a huge difference. Whenever we were shopping around for, for the water heater, um, I basically just did a Google search, um, best valued uh, water heater, and this one is a Takagi, and I got it off of Amazon, um, very, very highly rated, and uh, I think it's going to be an excellent one because it's, I mean, your water on demand, you don't run out, and, uh, you know, some people like to take long showers, so that works out good. Yeah. That one was one that we noticed. A lot of the tiny houses we stayed in, they went with the cheapest one available, and it was terrible. Yeah. It was so bad. All right, okay. so we're actually in the shower. This is actually dropped down. Um, the back end of this bus is actually dovetailed. Uh, whenever we bought it, it was actually made for a race car. Somebody hauled a race car in here. So I came and I built a false floor, and then that allowed us to drop that that shower um, floor down. And then it gives, you know, I'm six foot two, and that still gives me plenty of headroom. Um, then we, we got a cabinet in here. I made this countertop just out of some one buys and laminated them together. And uh, then I burnt it with, uh, with fire. And then we uh, put some material over it or some shellac over it. And, you know, we have, we have running water that all runs off a 12-volt pump. And, of course, a composting toilet. We actually found that the composting toilets that we used in tiny houses were way more hygienic really? with much less smell mm. than things with tanks, we found. Farm alarm guys, go check them out. <laughs>one of the reasons that we went and looked at all the tiny houses that you've seen on our channel is because it sounded like such a fairy tale this will solve all your problems it'll be so much cheaper than anything else you can do and we went and actually stayed in them because we wanted to show people is it really worth the money you're putting into this and for the most part they were cute little houses uh, a lot of them had safety issues like they wouldn't have banisters along the top of the sleeping lofts and a lot of people have kids that want to go into these tiny houses. I think the cheapest one we saw was 42,000 and the most expensive one we saw was 135,000. And I think for some parts of the country, people 
that sounds like not very much because they're looking at homes that are like half a million for a two bedroom home without any property. And so it sounds like a lot, but people have a hard time flipping tiny houses because you can't get a mortgage on a tiny house unless it's on a piece attached to a piece of property because the bank has equity and control over the property that the house is on. We've gone through the, we've gone through the ringer on this about if you want a tiny house, it has to be on a piece of property or you have to pay cash. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, that's pretty wild. So you had said something about $100,000, over $100,000 for a tiny 000. house. Here in the Midwest, housing is a lot cheaper than it is out on the West Coast. Yeah. And $100,000, you can get a full-size nice house. And so that, that blows my mind when somebody wants to get into a tiny house for that much money. You know, with a school bus, you can you can buy a school bus, 2,500 um, bucks, probably a pretty nice school bus for $5,000. Um, but you know, a couple thousand dollars to get you into a school bus, a couple more thousand dollars can get it, you know, going for, you know, you, you're not going to have a whole lot in it, but you know, you can, if you're building it yourself, you can do what you can with what you have, with where you are. And you know, you could just put a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. If you're fine with doing projects yourself, you know, you can get into this movement for really cheap. Right. It's just about skills. It's like homesteading itself. When you have the skills and some patience. And you, you can either put in uh, blood, sweat, and tears, or you can put in money. And if you have enough blood, sweat, and tears, what you turn out with is something that is really emotional, and you got to work on it with your family. Oh, yeah. Or you can put in money, but it but you are going to put in money. Yeah. It's, it's one or the other. Well, Justin Rhodes' bus is super nice, but like you said, if you could work on this with your family, it means so much more. And, it does. And I have a lot of memories with this bus, building it with my wife and uh, having our son help yeah. help and run the drill and i mean it's so cool it's part of your family legacy at least that that's how i look at it these kind of projects can build a legacy and if you have a youtube channel too it helps a lot of other people because Absolutely. then they can see how you did it and they say oh it's possible or you know what that looked like a lot of work i really don't want to do it that way i'm going to do it a different way but it, it kind of gives them a trail to walk down yeah to give see. them some direction yeah. and i have a teacher's heart so i really want you know I would love for people to, you know, do something like this. Yeah, more people, because even a even a, a little RV, uh, some of the RVs that we looked on, you'd have a lot more money in that into an RV that is made out of plastic and isn't going to hold together real well, and you use a lot of you lose a lot of money if you buy it new and then and then you're, you put some miles on it. Yeah, and that's another reason why we started with a school bus. I mean, you know, uh, they say an RV roof doesn't leak when it's being built. <laughs> you know, right? Once it once they pull it out of the building, then. Uh, you know, that's when the leaks start. Right, exactly. It's true. So we lived, we lived, in case you guys don't know, we lived in an RV for about six months while we traveled the country and it was a great experience. Um, but at the same time, it was sometimes a scary experience because sometimes RVs really don't hold up and we didn't know it inside and out because we didn't build it. Whereas you know where everything is, you know how it was put together. And so if something's broken, you can look and say, oh, that's the part, yep. let's fix it. And this thing is made to haul students around, kids around. It's it's a, gonna be a lot more safe yeah. than uh, than an RV that that's made out of you know two by twos with uh, some really light sheet metal thrown yeah. on the outside. Exactly. I guess that's the struggles of living in a RV, or in our case, a school bus. It's so hot in here. These windows have a rain guard on them, so we can put them down just a little bit. And uh, do you see here the rain guard where the rain's dripping off here? And so since the wind is blowing this way, we'll be able to get that breeze, but the rain won't come in. We don't want the rain in here. We've already got a leak, so we don't need any more water in here. These over here you can see are further down. Well, that's because since the wind's blowing this way, we'll get more of a breeze and less rain, where if the wind was blowing the opposite direction, we would have these windows up and those windows down. As you can see, these windows have a translucent or a frosted window tint on them. Since this is our bedroom and bathroom, we don't want anybody seeing in, but we can still get the light. And uh, we plan on tinting the other windows in the bus, but we wanted to go ahead and get these out of the way since this is where you know we're going to be. We want our privacy back here, so that's why we went ahead and did that.
Hey guys, today I'm cleaning up the greenhouse. Stay tuned. It's about 44 degrees outside and it's pretty warm in here. I'm already sweating and all I've done is walked around. So it's really nice that it stays super nice in here while it's chilly outside. That is a big dude. Trevor, we're coming for you. The chickens are really gonna enjoy these greens. They love fresh greens. Put those in there so we don't get more dandelions in here. He's so tiny. So we got our first load of weeds ready to go out to the chickens. It's all right. It's all right. I'm just going to see the chickens. Put on the tractor so we can use the box blade to get our field box bladed so we can move the sheep once it's seeded after the grass is grown. Apparently they're not interested right now because I'm out here making them nervous. I have a bucket in my hand so they think it's time to eat. Let's go ahead and give the sheep some feed too. I'm coming. I promise I'm coming. They literally follow me the entire length of the fence until I get over to the feeder. It's quite funny. Oh, got me. <laughs> I got her! Well, we made a late night trip to Menards. It's time to work on the bus. Stay tuned. Mom, let's go inside. Mom, I am not with a two steering wheel. I'm again. Yeah. Yeah, he's here. Hold on. It's for you. Hello. Who's there? Is this Henry? Yeah. It's mommy. Uh huh. Does mommy sound funny on the phone? Yeah. <laughs> I love you. I love you. Man, we finally caught a break in the weather. And grab sweats. We got a problem. We can't get through the fence. What are we going to have to do? We have to open it. I have to open it? Mm -hmm. 